Hello and welcome to Behind the Lines. I'm Diane Dayton. Today we're going to talk about getting happy workshops that are coming up. And with us right now to talk about getting happy is Rini Panzini and you are an interfaith minister. Thank I you am. for being with us. Thank you for having me. What is an interfaith minister? An interfaith minister, or as I like to call it, an all-faith minister, is um, someone that goes to seminary, learns about tons and hundreds of different world religions. Well, there's thousands, but we can't learn them all. And um, the connection between all of them, and we kind of approach our ministry in that way to connect people, bring everybody together, and let everybody see the similarities, and we don't point out the differences. There are more similarities than differences, yes. aren't there? Absolutely. The word metaphysician comes up mm -hmm. in relating to what you do and your yes. belief. What is that? Well, I consider myself an interfaith metaphysician, okay. and anybody can consider themselves a metaphysician. And metaphys metaphysics, um, by definition, means beyond the physical. Okay. So it's about the unseen. Right. believing in the unseen. Divine metaphysics, divine pertaining to God, the divine one, yes. is kind of a belief of the unseen coming from God. Mm -hmm. Anything that you don't see is coming from God. And that's what every religion believes anyway. That's called faith. Yeah. You believe in the unseen. Right. And boy, I know I believe in things <laughs> that are unseen. Right. We're talking about some quotes from some of these people that we might like Joel Osteen. Mm -hmm. You have a quote here too that he says, right. what your thoughts about your circumstances have you down. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you can be in one of the biggest battles of your life and still be filled with joy and peace and victory. If you simply learn how to choose the right thought, it's time to think about what you're thinking about. Right. That's a... That's a metaphysical um, idea. Thoughts are things and you choose your thoughts and that's how you in turn choose your life. So Joel Osteen, Christian metaphysician, I think. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now there are some basic principles. One of these that you cite, individuals are morally responsible for themselves. Mm -hmm. Your take on all that. So um, we believe God gives us everything. Everything comes from God. We also have free will. That is a big gift from God. Mm. So what you choose to do, whether it's good or bad, is your choice. And um, that's, that's how you learn in this life and how yeah. you kind of advance. Yeah. We are spirits or souls that are having a human experience. Mm -hmm. Tell me mm -hmm. about that. So as metaphysicians, we believe that we are all spirits, we are all souls, we are all connected to each other in soul families and soul nations, um, and that the body right now is our kind of vehicle for having a human experience. So to us, although death is extremely sad, and of course you miss the person that passes, um, you just go into a freer way of being once you pass. So you, you let go of your body, but your soul still exists, and your soul has choices and you can go to heaven and mm -hmm. hang out with some people and then decide to go back or do something else. So your soul always exists and it always has and it always will. Yeah. One of the other areas we talk about, we reap as we sow. Mm -hmm. Yes. We so do, don't we, we? We absolutely do. And that's one of the laws of the universe, which are tools that God has given us to create our perfect world. And that one, I believe, would pertain to um, the law of give and take. Mm -hmm. What you give, you get. If you're good to everybody, the universe is going to be good to you. If you're a sweet, kind person, you're going to get sweet, kind people attracted to you. So it also comes into the law of attraction. What you put out is what comes back. Yeah. All men are brothers, and God is their father. Mm -hmm. Or their mother. Or their mother. Yeah. Okay. Or, um, you know, your best friend, depending on the day that you're having. I, most of the time, see God as my girlfriend. You know, we're hanging out, and she kind of looks out for me and gives me a little heads up every <laughs> once in a while. But there are days when you, you need that more protective, fatherly figure. And then, you know, God is anything. God can be anything. It's God. So God can be your dad on one day. God can be your mom if you need a little more of a nurturing mm -hmm. spirit around you on another day. 
but we're all connected. We're all brothers and sisters, and, and God is there just taking care of us. And God is everywhere. You know, yes. I see God in nature, yes. especially in nature and mm -hmm. in the handiwork. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It is amazing. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. We also talk about, this is something that you were saying that uh, you're going to read this slowly because it's a big thought. Okay. Okay. It took months to understand. Talking about the engineer and architect. Okay. Tell me about that. Okay. So, well, let me read it to okay. you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, so this is actually from um, the senior minister at the Lancaster Metaphysical Chapel. Okay. This is her way of putting things in perspective for the congregants. And so I'll tell you what she how she says it, she's very eloquent. Okay. And then I kind of give the Rini version okay, good, of it. Good, that good. way, those of us that don't understand the eloquence sometimes okay. can understand. Right. Okay. Good, good. So Molly says, <laughs> just as an engineer or architect might view the world as components and structures, an artist as color design and texture, or a computer programmer as codes, a divine metaphysician sees the world as infinite expressions reflecting the one, which is God. Mm -hmm. Metaphysics teaches that which God is not a separate entity out there somewhere, but in all things, everywhere, always. It creates a worldview of inclusion and unity. Okay. So that is the book kind of version. Mm -hmm. All right. And so here's my version, and I like to use the computer programmer for this. Non-computer programmers, like myself, Look at a computer screen and see a beautiful screen, um, a nice screen saver or a Google search page or an eBay, eBay page selling something that you love. But a computer programmer looks at the same screen and sees and also knows that behind that screen is lots of numbers and jibby jabbies and things that you don't understand. Right. But a computer programmer knows that's what's behind there to make it seem beautiful. So the programmer sees the codes and numbers and the patterns and knows that if it weren't for those things, that the screen wouldn't exist. Mm -hmm. So a divine metaphysician looks at everything in the world and sees God behind it. And so we know this air, even though you don't see it, wouldn't exist if it wasn't for God, yeah. just as this plant yes. wouldn't exist if it wasn't for God. Mm -hmm. And myself or you, we wouldn't be here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You are a minister at the Metaphysical Church, or you go different places? I go to different places. I am an interfaith minister. I'm not a sanctioned metaphysical minister, but I do speak at the Metaphysical Chapel in mm -hmm. Lancaster City. I'm also on the board of directors. I'm the vice president. Um, but I am, by definition, an interfaith minister, okay. which means that I can really go to any church, chapel, temple, and help people to understand the connection between other religions. Yeah. Well, one of the first places I met you mm. was doing a wedding. Yes. And it was beautiful. Mm. What is it about doing weddings, too, for you? Uh, well, I love doing weddings because you're so caught up in the moment of this excitement with the couple, and I don't want to... I don't want to say it's pure love, but it's that beginning mm -hmm. marriage mm -hmm. love where you're, you know, you're, you're looking beautiful and everybody's happy and it's just this perfect moment in their lives that I get to not only share but stand in such close proximity to them yeah. <laughs> as I'm doing it that I actually get the energy and the, the happiness from them. And I just, wow. I love weddings, love them. Well, speak of happiness, yeah. get happy. Get happy is some workshops that you're going mm -hmm. to be doing. Is that what it is? How did yeah. this come about? Well, <laughs> my friends like to call me the happy flappy minister okay. because I'm okay. always giggly and smiley and stuff like that. So um, a couple of people have asked me, what keeps you so happy? Why are you always so smiley? And I say that I use the tools, you know, that God has put in place, the laws of the universe. Mm -hmm. and. I didn't know that I've always done that, but the more I research, I realize I've been doing it since I was a little kid. So I've always been a metaphysician. Um, I've always believed that what you want, you can have. And as long as you're, you know, helpful and you do service and 
you kind of fill out all your spiritual goals. Mm -hmm. Whatever else you need will fall into place. Yeah. So I pray a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, I use prayer as a visualization of the things that I would like to have in my life, the things I would like my loved ones to have. Um, I use meditation, okay. not on a daily basis, although it should be on a daily right, basis. Right. So don't do what I do. So there are many components to this. Mm -hmm. We're going to right now put your website up on the screen so they can find okay. out more about you. But what we're going to do, we're going to take a brief pause and then we're going to talk about all these different elements okay, involved great. in the workshops and how they can find out about it. So stay with us, get happy. We know that's what we all want. Welcome back to Behind the Lines. We're going to talk about getting happy. It's a workshop series that Rini Panzini, who's an interfaith minister, is putting together and doing right now. And to reiterate, you're doing this because, well, we all need this, don't we? Yes, everybody needs to be happy, and there are tools that can help you to be happy. Yeah. So why not use them? And what really is happiness? So happiness um, is defined as an emotional state of being, but it's also a spiritual mm -hmm. state of being. So if you can use these tools that God has put in place, the laws of the universe, then you can increase your happiness and, and it's easy and it's fun to do. Yeah, so really it it's a positive emotion that yes. leads to a good life and yes. we all want a good life. Yes. Now there are some different components that mm -hmm. you're going to be doing and talking about in mm -hmm. all of these workshops yep. and I so believe in this too, the power of prayer. Yeah. Expound. Okay, so prayer is the first um, wireless communication that mm -hmm. ever existed, right? We don't have to text God or, you know, smartphone your stuff, Instagram, God, mm -hmm. although you could, you know, who knows? Yeah. Um, so prayer is your feelings and your emotions that you put out into the universe. Pe mm -hmm. Some people may feel funny praying, they feel like they're talking to themselves, but somebody's always out there listening. <laughs> so it's a way of putting out your concerns. If, if you're having a bad day and you need to let go of something, you can do it through prayer. Mm -hmm. And that will make you happier, so you're not hanging on to things. If you have a wish or a goal or a dream and you don't know what to do with it, of course you can write it down, but you can also you know, express it through prayer. And prayer could be song and prayer could be you know, writing. That dance. can be a prayer. Prayer can be dance, why not? You know, yeah. Whatever picks your energy up and helps you to get it out into the universe, that's yeah. wonderful. And that could be a prayer. Prayer doesn't have to be just quietly right. sitting. And prayer that is uh, gratitude yes. and thankfulness. Yes, always first, it's always first. Powerful. Very powerful. Very yeah. powerful. Yes. And it's amazing when you're doing that too, mm -hmm. how lifted up you feel mm -hmm. in the whole process. Absolutely. Yeah, the connection, yeah. as you talked about. Yes. Purposeful meditation. What really does that mean, and what is the difference with that with prayer? Okay, well, meditation, as we all know, is a, something you should do on a daily basis, if not every other day. It doesn't have to be an hour, it doesn't have to be 20 minutes, you can do a five minute meditation. Meditation initially is for you to be able to quiet your mind, because we all have the monkey mind, they call it. <laughs> and it's chatter, 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 chatter. You know, I'm trying to meditate, and did I shut the oven? I'm trying to meditate, I need to go to the store. But if you practice enough, your brain and your thoughts kind of calm down, and that's the silence where you can start hearing what God is telling you, or feeling what God is telling you. You know, you may want to meditate on what am I doing here? What's my purpose? If you can get your mind silenced enough, you might just get that gut feeling like, oh, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And that, so you need that silence to get the messages through. Purposeful meditation um, starts that way. You should always start with trying to find the silence. But purposeful meditation is where you visualize your goals. Mm -hmm. and you visualize your dreams and you almost live through the feeling that you would have if you were doing it oh, in okay. reality. And that kind of, I think, um, prepares your, your being for having that true experience. And so then mm -hmm. you're putting the feeling out into the universe of having and finalizing this goal and so then your body, your energy, your mind knows how to get through it and how to get to it. Mm -hmm. 
So that's purposeful meditation. It's like visualizing your goals. And it's essentially setting the stage. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And opening up to being receptive. Yeah. And I find it really hard, especially with society now, we are multitasking everything, yes. to mm -hmm. just quiet your mind. So I guess in finding a place mm -hmm. where you can be more still, whether mm -hmm. it's in nature or a right. certain room in your house right. or that sort of thing, would yeah. that be accurate? Yeah. To, to have a happy place, I call mm -hmm. it, is very important. And a lot of people could be your bathroom. That's, you know, where you get your five minutes of <laughs> silence and nobody <laughs> right. bothers you. Right. It could be a corner of your basement mm -hmm. while everybody's upstairs doing homework. You kind of run down and light a candle, put a little low music on and just yeah. kind of. I was just going to ask you about music too. That can play a big part with this, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Depending on what you want to visualize during your meditation, if you just want a silence, then you can find any kind of hypnotizing, kind of relaxing music. Mm -hmm. If you are visualizing something, um, you want to be a speaker, you mm -hmm. want to speak in front of millions of people, and you want that rush, then put on the music that gives you that rush okay. while, you're, while you're doing this purposeful meditation. And that's just another tool to help you get up there. Journaling with intention. Hmm. Journaling with intention, that's a big one. Sitting there and writing about this. Yes. Okay. So lots of people journal just to get their feelings out, which is another wonderful thing to do, right? Very cathartic. You had a bad day, you had a great day, you know, all that, you just, your mm -hmm. thoughts phew, right onto the paper. Journaling with purpose is um, writing out your goals, specifically, detailed. I want to run a marathon. I'm going to buy new sneakers. I'm going to get the shoelaces that I want. I mean, so mm -hmm. detailed, the right socks. And so you want to journal every single thing you think of when, when you think of that goal. Yeah. And that will help you kind of organize it in yourself and help you to get to that goal. It's focus and it also gives it life. Yes. Making it concrete too, yes. right? Mm -hmm. What about vision boarding? Oh, vision boarding, my favorite because it's crafty okay. and I love the craft. Yeah. <laughs> so vision boarding is a great way of visually setting your goals and your dreams. Um, there are so many different ways of doing it and so many different times of the month mm -hmm. that make it stronger or more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Mm -hmm. Well, I can't think of what I want to say. But making it more powerful? Or yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, more powerful and more your intention, which way you want your intention to okay. go. So if you're going to make a vision board of your goals that you want to have, it's good to do it on a new moon. Oh, okay. And the moon phases are very, very important when you're doing vision boarding. If you're not into moon phases, you don't have to use them. I use them. Mm -hmm. I just feel like it's another tool from God in my mm -hmm. laws. Right. And uh, new moon will help to build things. So when you're when you're creating a goal, you're building. Mm -hmm. A full moon will help to kind of let go of things. So you mm -hmm. can also make a vision board on things that you don't need anymore, things okay. that you already finished. Right. And that would be around the full moon. You can also do a feng shui vision board, wow. which is adding then colors to solidify your intention, adding in areas of the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lots to do. Claiming your power. Claiming your power. So we all are divine, and we all have the divine in us. That's why we're all connected. And the divine, of course, has lots of power. Mm. So you can use certain things to claim your divinity. There are certain ways of standing Really? That, that claim your power. There are um, certain colors to wear while you're doing certain things that claim your power. Mm. So I have a whole workshop on that, on f claiming your power and just giving you more authority for yourself so you feel like you can go out and, and get your stuff. There's a real ownership. Yes. That's what it is, right? And this yes. last one I really love too. Wow, and who wouldn't? Attracting love. Attracting love. What do you mean? Okay. So, attracting love, a lot of people will think like, oh, well, I'm going to get my soulmate through this workshop. And so you may, but that's not exactly what I meant when I was putting it together. <laughs> it is using the laws of the universe to attract love. First of all, self-love. Claiming your power, 
self-love. Mm -hmm. um, meditation, self-love. So they all kind of combine into that one workshop. Once you love yourself, it's much easier to go out then and find someone to love. Because law of attraction, yes. if you have love here, you're going to have love here and you're going to find right. each other. Well, first of all, too, when you say, you know, to love others like you love yourself, yes. you've got to love yourself yes. first to love others. In yeah. every religion, yep. yeah. Really is. Yeah. We're going to put your website up on the screen, and there we're going to find a lot of different things, right, Rini? What yes. are we going to find? So, on there, you will find the different descriptions of the workshops and the registrations for the workshops, dates and times, and all that. Um, I also have a page that will take you to wedding ceremonies that I've done, and okay. if you want to inquire about ceremonies, I also have a page on interfaith classes for children. Oh because I also wrote an interfaith uh, holiday book for kids oh, showing the different um, religions and how they're connected at the holiday time, which is fun because we love a holiday. We certainly do. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to take a brief pause and we come back. We're going to have some final thoughts. Stay with us. We've been talking about getting happy with interfaith minister Rini Panzini. What are some final thoughts you want to leave us with, Rini? Um, I would like everyone to know that you definitely can be happy. You can choose to be happy. If you're not so happy, there are things you can do to become happy. Um, everyone is connected. That's something that makes me very happy. I like to see God in everyone and see my connection to everyone. Yeah. Um, I think that's a big, big thing. Yeah, and to know that we're loved. Yes. Yeah, we are loved yes. and that we are more like then we are different. Absolutely. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think these workshops that you are doing are really good because they help us focus on these different areas of activities right. that we can do every day right. to position ourselves right. to live happier lives, right. right? And they're not difficult. They're easy things and they're fun things. And it's, you know, thoughts are things and yep. you need action to yep. put them to work. That's so you right. might as well do it. Claim your power. Attract right. that love, right? <laughs> Okay, once again, we're going to put the uh, website up on the screen, so if you want to find out more about the workshops and also about the services that Rini offers, it's there. Yeah. Thank you so much for being with us thank today. Thank you for having me. I feel happy. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to say thank you for joining us today, too. I'm Diane Dayton with Behind the Lines, and remember, keep looking behind the lines. You might be surprised what you find.